Today is day 155 of Blender. It is also Tuesday, July 12, 2022. And I'm going to work with um, another geometry node text animation. So I'm going to scroll um, down to geometry nodes, hide the spreadsheet, click on new, zoom in a little bit by using the middle mouse button and disconnecting the input from the output. So I'm going to be working with a text and another way of saying text is string. And so I'll do shift A to pull up my node right um, menu and I'll search for string to curves. And what that's going to do is just going to turn my text, whatever I write down here. So let's say like extra um, to basically curves. And so those letters in extra are going to become curve instances. And I'm going to in connect that to my output. And then I'll be able to see it over here. Now, if I want to change the rotation, I'll go over here to object properties and change the rotation of the X to be 90 degrees. So it, cr it rotates right 90 degrees. Um, along the x-axis, which is the red axis. And then if I want to be able to change the string um, and modifier properties, I can just connect the string into the input and now I can change what it says from the modifier properties. Okay, now I am basically allowed to do shift A and fill curve so I can give some face to the um, string. And if I go to wireframe mode, I notice that the strings are kind of messy. And so in order to fix that, I'm going to change the fill type from triangles to n-gons and that fixes that. Back to solid view mode, I want to give the letter some thickness. So I'm going to do shift A and go to extrude mesh um, and put that right in between. And that gives the letters thickness. And I'm going to control that value by going here and changing it to 0 0.1 actually. Um, and then if I want to control that value from the modifier properties, just as I can control the string, I can connect that value to the input and now I'll be able to control it over here. All right, back to 0 0.1. But if I go in the back, I noticed that the fill, right, didn't apply to the back as it did to the front. So in order to fix that, I'll do shift A and then get a join geometry node and put that in here. And that's going to join the effect of the fill and the extrusion mesh once, you know, both are joined together. So I have to join the fill curve because that's not joined yet. And once that's joined, now I can see that it's filled in the front and in the back. Now, um, that's it for basically the visual. There is one more thing. If I want to change the font, I can go here and maybe change it to Arial Black. <clears throat> so open font. Now it's like that. All right. Now onto the movement part. So if I do Shift A and get a translate instances, um, I can put that right in between here. And what that's going to do, if I change it, um, if I change the X position, it's going to move left and right. Y is going to move up and down, and Z is going to move um, uh, forward and backward. But I want it all to go back to zero because I don't want all the letters to move at the same time in the same direction. And so in order to fix that, I'm going to go to the layout, I'm going to select it, I'm going to click on it, I'm going to do shift A, and then go to empty and add a plane axis. And what that's going to do is going to be basically an object that I'm going to use to be able to control my letters individually. And so I'm going to go back and click on the text, and then I'm going to go to the outliner where all of my objects are, and I'm going to select the empty and drag it over here. And that is going to give me the object information note of the empty, which contains the information of the empty. So like it's location, rotation, scale, and etc. Um, so what I'm going to do in order to um, kind of work with the translation a little bit, I'm going to get the distance between each letter um, and the empty. And so that distance, that value is going to be input into the translation and that is how they're going to move relative to the distance that they are from the empty. So in order to make sense of it, I have to do shift A and get a position node. So that's going to get the position of each letter. And then I'll do shift A and do a vector math node because um, I'm basically getting the distance, right, from shapes. And so those are vectors. And so um, one of them is the letter and the other one is the empty. And so, for example, just so this makes sense, if I'm looking only at the letter E, the position of E and um, the position of the empty, the distance between those two vectors are zero, right? Because they're literally next to each other, like they're, they're in the same position. And so that value is zero. So if I put that value in the translation, right, it's going to move zero while the rest of the letters are going to actually move um, relative to whatever, you know, the distance is between the letter and the empty. And so look, if I move it into here, E is going to stay in the same position because again, its distance is zero. And so just by logic, the translation is going to be zero. So it's going to translate zero meters because by default, the, um, movement or at least the measurement unit of measurement in blender is meters 
Um, okay, and so, yeah, so then that happens, and then I also notice that if I grab the empty and I by pressing G, right, and then I grab it along the X axis by pressing X, I notice that it moves really weird. And so I'm gonna press escape so it goes back to its original position. And in order to fix that, I'll do shift A and I'll do a combine X, Y, Z and put that there. And I'll make sure that instead of X, it's connected to the Y. And if I now do G and X, it's gonna move up and down, which is what I wanted. It's kind of like a bouncy text animation. But I noticed that the closer I am to the letter, the lower it is, like E, and the farther I am I am from a letter like A, is it's higher, and I want the opposite to happen. So I'm going to press escape, and I'm going to do shift A, and get a color ramp node, and I'm going to put that right before the combine X, Y, Z. Um, so I'm just going to click on the triangle and flip the color ramp. And so now it's the opposite, right? The closer I am to the, to the letter like E, the higher it is. And the farther I am away from a letter like A, the lower it is, which is exactly what I wanted. So now if I grab it and I move it, it's really nice. Press escape. Okay. So now in order to kind of control more of how far it bounces, I can do shift A and add a math node. Um, and put that right for the combined XYZ and change it to multiply. Now that value, if I set it to two, right, is going to basically increase the height at which it kind of goes, right, um, from the top. So if I do GX, right, it's gonna increase, right, and it's gonna bounce a lot more than whether, it, like, in comparison to like 0 0.5, right? All right, but I'm going to maybe leave it at one, something like that. All right, and then I also notice if I move um, my empty and I do G, X, I notice that if I go to constant speed, the letters are going up and down at the same speed. And I want the letters to follow kind of like, you know, natural physics. I want them to go up really fast and then slow down at the top and then go accelerate down really fast, right? Because over here, the velocity must be zero. And so I want them to follow kind of that logic and so in order to apply that same logic i'll do shift a and get a float curve and put that right maybe next to the color ramp and kind of do the same thing and kind of emulate that curve um, and so now if i go back over here and press the button under the escape key and hover over front i go to front view and i hold on the empty and i press g and x to grab along the x-axis and if i go to constant speed i notice that the letters go up really fast and then they stay a little bit at the top and then they go down really fast. So if you just keep looking at one letter, um, you'll notice that that's what, um, that's what's happening. Okay. Anyway, um, moving on to the colors. And so in order to give it a color, let's say I'm going to go to uh, material properties and give it a base color and turn it to whatever color I want. I won't see it even if I'm in material preview at the top over here because, um, oh no, please don't freeze out on me. Oh, thank God. Let me say this before it freezes out because I'm on my old laptop right now. Um, what's today's date? 7, 12, 22. Okay. Save Blender file. So, um, it won't, um, be visible, right? Even if I'm in material preview, because what I'm actually setting the material to is the cube and the cube is not connected, right? This is the cube and it is not connected to my output. And so um, I have to do a set. I'll do shift A and I'll do set material and put that right in between there. And then I can select that material and then I'll be able to see it. But I don't want that material. I actually want different colors. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna go to the shading workspace and I'm going to just go to my colors website, not my website, but like the other website that I always use um, and just kind of pick a color palette and I'll be right back once I do. So I think I'm going to go for this pastel palette. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'll pick two colors. Anyway, um, I'll just go and pick whatever random color for now. Maybe like this blue one. And I'll basically go over here and I'll do shift A and get a color ramp. Right. And put that in here and connect the color to the base color. And then I'll select one of the tags and go here to the like the black little bar which is kind of the color and I'll just go to hex and paste that color in there from like the website that I got and then I'll go back to the site and I'll pick something like this color and um, grab maybe this tag and select the white bar 
paste that in there. All right, so notice it's kind of changing, but it's very slight, and I don't want a linear gradient. I want it to be constant so that only uses the colors that I want, like those exactly two colors. And so now I'll just kind of do this, right? And so it's not happening, right? It's not randomly changing the colors because I haven't added an object info um, node. And so when I select the object information, which in this case is the geometry node, and I click on random and connect it to the factor, now I'll be able to see the letters are each going to be like a random color between these two, um, as you can clearly see. Um, I might just add one more. I don't know if I want to add this one. And I'll add another one. Click on it. Go to the hex. And change that to that color. So maybe... All right, that. And then maybe something like um, this color here. Add another one. Meh. I'd rather it be blue than actually maybe that's that's whatever that's fine um okay so that's basically what it's looking like so far and then now I basically go back to geometry nodes um, and that's the same material right that I'm that I'm using um, and now I'm gonna go to layout and I'm just gonna kind of work on my animation part now so let me exit out of here and go back here shift a to add a backdrop so i'll do a plane s to scale right i'll do g to grab x to grab on the, along the x-axis gx a little bit like that edit mode to go into i mean tab to go into edit mode or over here right and then i'll do edge select which is the top left icon over here select the back edge at the back over here and then um oops okay and then e to extrude and then z to extrude on the up and down axis which is the z axis right and then I'll go back into object mode by pressing tab and then I'll go to the modifier of properties which is the wrench icon and I'll add a modifier and I'll add a bevel and then that'll add the bevel to the edge and so I'm going to increase the amount and increase the segments and then right click and shade smooth and then s to scale again but I'm going to scale along the x-axis by pressing x all right so that's my backdrop and then I'll probably do g and then z a little bit to bring it down so that the letters are all at the top all right and then at this point I'm going to go and do control s to save it and then i'm going to go to um, my rendered over here my rendered preview select the light and i'll go to object data properties change it to be a sun and change the strength the strength to be three and then i'll deselect any shadows and then i'll do g y as i grab the sun and then r to rotate and rotate it a little bit like this so that there's some lighting over here and then at this point i'm going to basically um Oh, I said I was going to do the animation and I didn't. <laughs> okay, so let me just set the view up though. Um, actually, no, let me do the animation. So for the animation, I'll press on the um, I'll press on the empty and I'll move it right before it starts affecting the letter E. So kind of like over here, and then I'll press on N to bring up my end panel and that location. I want that to be the first frame, right? I want it to be. Um, like I want my video to start like that so um, I'm gonna hover over that location which is like negative 1.1316 meters and press I and that's going to insert that keyframe that location keyframe over there and then um, I will make sure that it ends at 80 because I only want 80 frames and basically um, then if I go to keyframe 80 and I select the um, empty and I'll move it I'll do GX right to grab along the X axis and I'll move it right after it stops affecting the letter A so about here and then again I'm going to select and hover I mean hover not select I'll hover over that location on the X axis and press I as I hover over it, and it's going to insert that location keyframe there now if I go back to keyframe one and I hover over it I um, it will kind of just you know go to just be like that so it's gonna like animate so yeah let's see all right, and then I wonder if I could just make this kind of go a little bit faster by going back to geometry nodes, clicking on the text and going to the uh, curve and kind of making it a little bit less like that and then playing it again. So now it should stay 
Why is it going so slow? It's going so slow. How about instead of 80 frames, actually, you know what? I'm trying to see, what if I do that? Ah, that's how it is. But I don't want it to stay at the top for so long. Let me see. I think that's fine. Alright, and so at this point, I'm going to just go to the front view by pressing the button under the escape key and hovering over front. Um, and I'm just going to do a little bit like that, a little bit like this, and then I'm going to do control alt z no, I can't even speak, control alt numpad 0. And if you don't have a numpad, you go into edit, preferences, input, and then you go and check on emulate numpad, make sure it's on, and that will emulate your numpad for you. To get out of this view, you want to do um, press your middle mouse button and to go back into the view you want to go and press zero all right um so i'll just kind of play around until i get the view that i want so that's really good um i think that's good and then the last thing that i want is to change the backdrop to be um like a very lighter color like white so i'll go here base color turn that up okay all right and that's pretty much all there is to it so i'll go back to zero and then I'll start rendering the images. And so I'll go to output properties um, and I'll select the folder where I want my images to render. And I will, I will basically make a folder in Blender and animations and then I'll call it something like 7, 12, 22. And um, what did I make today extra? Okay, so this is the folder where I want my images to render. I want it to render as a PNG images as a PNG image, and then I'll do Control S and then render, render animation, and then the frames should render um, at that folder and I'll unpause when that happens. All right, so at this point, all the images are rendered in the folder. There's 80 of them. So I'm just gonna close this out and I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna go now, scroll down at the top and plus video editing, video editing, and then I'm gonna add image um, sequence and I'm going to go to that folder which is created. I'm going to select the first one, scroll all the way down and shift select the last one and select all the images in between and then I'm going to select add image strip and then I'm going to go to output properties and just um, get the location for the video to render. Put that in there, accept and then I'll make sure that the format is FFMPEG video. And if I go to encoding, I need to make sure the container is MPEG4 and the output quality is high quality. I'll do control S and now it's going to be super quick because it's literally just putting all of these images together. Um, so now I'll just go and at the top here and I'll render animation. And if I open up the folder, it should be um, where I put it, which I have to find it over here. So desktop and Blender animation. And then let's see, where is it? Extra video. And then I should be here in a few seconds. Once it's done rendering. All right, and that is the final result. And if I do it again, and one more time, and that's it. All right, um, that's it for today.